that. Uh, <laughs> here is a biblical scholar. But I, I love this. Phil, you are kind of the combination. You've got the doctorate in theology, but you've spent decades in the media ministry. So you have a, you have a new book called Maximizing Your Influence. And it's for churches and media, uh, I mean, churches and organizations right. to be able to, to maximize what they do with the gospel. But I love something you said in the beginning. Do we even believe the gospel ourselves? Talk, talk a little bit about that. Well, I wrote a book years ago called The Way Back, How Christians Blew Our Credibility and How We Get It Back. And we thought, we, you know, my co-writer Jonathan and Bach and I, we, we've sat around, you know, fire pits thinking about why Christians have lost their influence in the culture, why Christianity seems to be marginalized. And we thought, okay, we're not telling our story well, it's a branding problem, it's a marketing problem. So we started looking at research. And when you look at the research of how Christians live their lives, it's horrifying. We're just not good Christians. I mean, we're bad salespeople. We don't have a marketing problem. We have a sales problem. And um, it's, it's like going to the headquarters of Coke and everybody there is drinking Pepsi. I'll give you a great example. We found out that 40% uh, of church going Christians today, sitting in the pew on Sunday, read their Bible once a month, rarely or never. Now, wow. That's almost half the Christians in America in church read their Bible once a month, you know, once a month, rarely or never. Uh, we found out if you go to church, three out of eight Sundays, the pastor's thrilled these days. Because you just remember when I was little, I got a perfect attendance pin. They don't yeah. do that anymore because right. people just don't come very regularly. So we, uh, there's just tons of research out there that indicates one of the reasons we're losing influence is not because of marketing or branding or anything. It's just because the world looks at us and thinks if they don't, you know, they're not any better Christians than that. Why do I want to become one of those people? So you're right. So what's the way, what's the way back for us out of that? <laughs> Don't leave us hanging here. What's the Well, solution? we've got to get serious about being believers. It's interesting that uh, I, I read a statistic recently that the vast majority of Christians in America will live their entire lifetime without sharing their faith with one single person. Wow. One single, well, you know, we don't even, we don't believe in it enough that we want to tell somebody about it. That's amazing to me. Um, is 78, and I'll tell you, overall, 78% of Americans don't even know their next door neighbor's name. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't mean we have to go hand out tracts or go witness to people. Let's just go next door and start a conversation with somebody. Mm -hmm. Let's just share that we were in church last Sunday and what happened you know, our, in our lives. And mm -hmm. So I think we, we just start there. It's so simple, but we don't do it. So Phil, how do we <coughs> use digital media, yeah. you know, to reach people with the gospel and to maximize that, go into yeah. all the world and preach the gospel? Well, we live in a digital age. There's no question about it. And it's interesting that when the lockdown, lockdowns happened with churches, when the churches were shut during the pandemic, I thought we'd be out of business because we work with churches all over the country, helping them use media. But I'll tell you, I got flooded with phone calls because pastors were just caught. They didn't realize how to live stream their services or how to use video or how to use social media very effectively. And we're finding that in a digital age, we have to learn to speak that language if we're going to share the gospel with people that, that understand that language. So I just think that, you know, Bible schools and, and seminaries teach pastors how to preach, how to teach, how to share the Bible. They don't teach them how to communicate digitally. They don't teach them how to use social media or what a website can do for your church or just how to live stream effectively. So I wrote the book. It's kind of a manual for every pastor and ministry leader in America to have on their desk because we need to understand how these things work if we're going to be effective in the 21st century. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, just feel like listening to this about, you know, how we're supposed to communicate because as yeah. Christians, we're doing a pretty bad job of that. <laughs> but people, there's mixed messages and then mm -hmm. you work in Hollywood and you have an experience of just storytelling. And so yes. what can you see as something that we can do as believers, as Christians to make sure that when we share the message that it's clear that people understand and it's impactful? Well, it's funny. Uh, I, I, one of the things we can, places we can start is our own story, particularly our story of how we came to Christ. Uh, if you look at collectible comic books, the most valuable collectible comic books of all time are origin stories. How Batman got started, how Iron Man got started. People are fascinated with origin stories. I, I worked years ago for Oral Roberts when he was doing his primetime TV specials. And as a teenager, Oral got healed at 17 from tuberculosis, yeah. dramatic healing. And he told that story all the time. Every time he'd preach, he'd tell it. Every time he'd write a book, he'd tell it. Every time he had a phone call with somebody, he'd tell it. One day we were shooting a program, I actually pulled him aside and said, Oral, give it a rest, man. We're sick of hearing that story. <laughs> and it wasn't, it was years before I realized I was an idiot because that retelling that story the way he yeah. did gave other people the faith to believe if God yes. would do that for him, yeah. he'd do that yes. for me. Wow. And so telling your own story about how God changed your life, how yeah. he transformed your marriage, how he, whatever he did for you, telling that story really resonates with people. So creativity. 
I mean, we serve this creator, <laughs> yes. right? This mm -hmm. creative God, this incredible God. Where are we with creativity I as know. the church? Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes we are just running to catch up. Well, you know, if you look at the very first verse of the Bible, God chose to introduce himself as a creator. He could have chosen to inter introduce himself as a lot of things, yep. but he chose to introduce himself as a creator and we're made in his image. I just think we need to raise the bar because creativity is really the currency of this generation. You know, they follow Marvel movies, they follow, you know, all kind of creative stuff. This generation just follows it. And it's just amazing how creativity can change somebody's life. Um, what is trending right now? Like, what's the hottest thing? Is it Instagram, TikTok, Facebook? <laughs> do we need eight minute videos, 12 minute videos, two second videos? Yeah. Like, what do we need? Well, TikTok is blowing up. There's no question about it. I don't fully understand it, I can tell you. <laughs> my, that's a TikTok, TikTok, TikTok apostle right over there. My son, -in -law, my son in law, Chris Guerra, has almost a million followers on TikTok. What? And uh, it's just amazing wow. what, cl what connects with people. Um, Instagram is still wildly popular. I, I really like it a lot, although they're, they're censoring more and more stuff. I'm noticing. Yeah. Uh, Facebook is doing the same thing. So I just think, you know, we, one thing I'd, I'd want everybody to understand is social media is social. Don't yeah. just post something and walk away. Right. Start engaging with people. Talk to people. Yeah. Use it as a platform. You may be a shut in. You may not have a job. You may be, you know, forced to sit at home most of the day. You can start a ministry just on social media, mm -hmm. just reaching out to people and starting those conversations. 